We're proud to announce CISO Stories, a new podcast series in partnership with Cybersecurity Collaborative and Cyber Reason. CISO Stories features the candid perspectives and experiences of frontline senior security executives and dives deep into timely security topics. CISO Stories is hosted by Todd Fitzgerald, VP of Cybersecurity Strategy at Cybersecurity Collaborative, and Sam Curry, Chief Product and Security Officer at Cyber Reason. Listen weekly as they speak with extraordinary CISOs by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash CSP. Welcome back to Security and Compliance Weekly. Hey, the Cyber Risk Alliance, in partnership with InfraGuard, has launched a critical infrastructure resilience benchmark study. You can participate and measure the readiness, your readiness for ransomware by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash CIRB. Complete the survey and you'll be able to get your score. When you finish the survey, don't forget to visit securityweekly.com forward slash subscribe so you can stay in the loop on all things Security Weekly. You can subscribe to all of our shows on your favorite podcast catcher or watch them on our YouTube channel or on our Twitch channel. You can also join our Discord server where you might see pictures of squirrels and you can sign up for our mailing list. All right, let's get back to the discussion. Um... What we often try to do uh, in these two segment shows is is frame the problem in the first segment and and talk about solutions and how do we how do we get beyond this how do we fix the problem in the second uh, segment I suspect that we're not done talking about the problem um, one thing I wanted to do just to sort of uh, you know, help frame the conversation, especially for our listeners that don't necessarily uh, work with PCI or in the PCI context, is um, just give a real brief explanation of what it is that Joseph and myself and, and Kat and others that are uh, constantly frustrated within the PCI world when our customers are trying to de-scope things and, and trying to avoid doing PCI. Let me just briefly describe at a high level what the PCI data security standard is all about. Johnny, if you would throw the graphic up, please. Um, the PCI standard is is 12 major requirements that sort of uh, bubble up to what they call six security goals. This is my paraphrase, but uh, if you you know, look at this, I don't need to read it to you. Secure all the things, secure the data, and so on and so forth. Uh, whenever I have a discussion with people, and I have this discussion often, especially in the hacker security Twitter side of the world, you know, that people that believe that PCI is just a checkbox exercise, it's irrelevant, it doesn't it apply, why not make it go away? Why not get beyond it? Why not try to avoid it? Uh, I asked the question, what are these basic fundamental table stakes kind of things that you should be doing in your entire organization? You know, what is it that you're struggling with? What are you not doing here that you don't want me to see? Because anything you're trying to de-scope, when it comes time to measure it in terms of the data security standard, you really kind of ought to should be doing this anyway. Uh I'll throw it back to uh, to Joseph real quick. Uh, uh, any commentary on this? Uh, agree, disagree, strongly disagree? Have at it. Yeah, I think PCI the PCI standard taught me a lot about how to apply, you know, these these requirements in every situation. So whether I'm involved in HIPAA or ISO or or FISMA or SOC, you know, I think that it's a a great standard that should be applied many more places and not, you know, something that we are trying to get out of and, and only apply in the smallest number of places. But, uh, but yeah, I, I'm in total agreement with you. Well, it's funny. Um, uh, it happened to be yesterday on Twitter, uh, a person that's you know fairly well known in the, in the security <clears throat> space, Aly- Alyssa Miller, she posted a question, Hey guys, uh, you know, do you have any ideas or suggestions on standards or frameworks uh, that you recommend to customers? Uh, I'm looking for something other than NIST, whatever, or NIST that or NIST that. And and I wrote back PCI. I, I kind of swear by it, uh, you know, because it, it is fundamentally everything you should be doing, uh, table stakes, you know, basic good security hygiene. And I, I threw it out there knowing that there was going to be people reading 
mean, the response is that we're going to react to, you know, why would a security professional bring up PCI? But, you know, people were actually saying, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of that that kind of works for me, especially those that were familiar with it. The the one thing I would uh, I, I sort of push back on and wouldn't recommend PCI for. Uh, I'm interested on your take on this, Joseph. Alyssa was looking for something to to use as as a, a way to come develop a maturity model or a way to reflect a, a you know a, a mature a maturity measure for an organization. Um, and that's problematic for me because PCI is sort of binary. It's it, you know it's pass fail. It's all or nothing. Uh, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's a great point. You know, PCI doesn't cover something that is foundational to information security, in my opinion, which is integrity. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, when we do SOC audits, we use something called COSO, the COSO framework, and it talks about things like you know, code of ethics. If, if your organization does not care about ethics and integrity, then how can you ever have any accountability around standards and requirements? And so uh, establishing a tone from the top, you know, that your company cares about uh, security and ethics and compliance, um, you know, communication from management about policies that have been implemented and communicating those responsibilities out to the workforce. Those are all things that come from that COSO internal control framework and uh, that is an example of something that you would need in order to develop a maturity model for your organization to understand what are you striving for and what what level are you trying to reach. And a lot of that will come from more of an internal control framework. I guess I have a more basic question. Uh, and It's my show, so I get to go off on a, a rabbit hole real quick, down the rabbit hole. Um, Again, because it's not really in in my wheelhouse. Because I I'm I'm a one trick pony with PCI. What is, what is the general purpose of of a maturity model or trying to measure the the state uh, of the security in your organization? Anyone have ideas or a, a brief explanation? Set me straight. Enlighten me. I I'll, I'll go first. I think that when you look at CMMC, which is something new that's coming. Uh, which mm-hmm. is a maturity model, or when you look at the NIST cybersecurity framework, um, and they use a tool called the Baldridge Assessment Tool, and it mm-hmm. is for the purpose of establishing you know, a, a maturity model for your organization. I think it's really just um, establishing goals, like being honest with where are we today? Let's recognize where we are today. Are we at a place where we are uh, sharing with the community, like, do I go every month to the uh, InfraGuard meetings and learn from um, people in my industry who have maybe had some incidents ahead of me, and I'm learning from that, and I'm proactively applying that within my organization? That's a very mature place to be. Or are we still reactive? We don't have... Right. Um, you know, defined things, we, we're reacting to issues within our organization. And so I, I think a maturity model is just about being honest about where you are, and then establishing some goals about where you want to be, because any organization that's going to be successful has to decide, we're going to go down this strategic road and become a more mature organization. We're not going to be what we were five years ago. And so that's, that's where I think maturity models are, are very helpful. Kat, you so, had something to add? I'm sorry, go ahead, Kat. Oh, um, yeah, no, I was just going to, I was going to say that I agree with that, uh, with uh, the maturity models and being o- honest about where you're at. Um, and I wanted to take it back a little bit to uh, the PCI and SOC 2 piece of the, the, of the discussion. Um, mm-hmm. Something that I've done that I think has been helpful in framing people to have that mindset to have a maturity, to, to even think about a maturity model is like the original thing is on their brain is I got to pass PCI or SOC 2, that sort of thing. And mm-hmm. they're reducing scope and all this kind of stuff in PCI. One of the things I do try to tell them is, all right, yeah, uh, PCI, it does apply to your cardholder environment, but a lot of things do apply to your cardholder environment as well as something like SOC 2, 
uh, especially like a type two, uh, it's continuously monitoring those things. So why not do PCI on the overall environment or at least all these sensible things on the overall environment and make them your SOC 2 technical controls and then monitor it as opposed to with PCI, like a snapshot in time, monitor, monitor it with like a SOC 2 type 2 overtime sort of a deal so that you continuously have that. Does that make sense? I think I rambled. <laughs> it does make sense. Uh, I I uh, chafe a little bit about, uh, and it's not on you, you just happen to say it, Kat, but the, the idea that PCI is point in time. Uh, yes, it is a snapshot. Yes, it is an annual compliance check. But the things that I'm supposed to be checking are are you doing things on a daily basis? Are you doing things on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, recurring, periodic basis? So um, the idea that it's point in time is somewhat misleading, although, frankly, yeah, a lot of customers treat it as, oh, shit, it's it's PCI time. We got a quick make up. 12 months worth of records for what no, we were no, 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 that's not, about. that's, yeah, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is get right. similar controls from PCI mm -hmm. and write them into your SOC 2, which do uh, include yeah. those daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly type of activities. Right. Um, right. And I'm just talking about how to get your, your, the company uh, to get into that mind frame. You know what I mean? They're, they're at one point where they're like, this is blocking sales. And so how do you right. get them to care from sales to security? And so that, that's what I was going into. Well, but that's a great question. And, and I'll, I'll put it back to Joseph. How do you, how do you get a company to care? Uh, um, well, there, there has to be some accountability at some point, you know, um, and whether that's coming from an external pressure on your organization or it's coming from an internal leader who really cares about the right thing. I absolutely love our clients. And thankfully, this is most of our clients. I, I'm, I absolutely love the clients who say, yeah, we're doing this because we've got a customer requiring us to do this. Yes, we're doing this because it's an expectation in our industry. But we really want to do a good job on this. We really want to be more secure. We want to get better. We want to learn. We want to grow. I absolutely Optimist. love clients who have that mentality because that's the growth mindset. You know, that is, sure. you know, learn from failure, uh, embrace obstacles, uh, you know, give your best. And, and, um, you know, a lot of our clients are like that. And I, I love working with, with people like that because they, they do care. And so the people who aren't there yet and are just starting, like Kat's saying, you know, we're doing this to get a sale right now. Um, there has to be some accountability at some point. You know, they have to um, have a light bulb moment where a client reads their report and asks a question about why do you do this this way? And, oh, we're concerned about that. And, or a regulator or a fine or something that puts some pressure on them to start saying, oh, maybe we should care about this because this, this can impact us um, financially, but it could also affect our operations if we were to be breached so yeah um, see i love working with those first years where they're like a startup they know nothing about it they just care about their product and somebody hit them with a sales inquiry because <laughs> they're because they're doing sock two and i just need the report da, 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 da. i love dealing with with those those types of folks and kind of changing their mind and stuff like that um but yeah like uh, uh but your firm uh does have that reputation i feel like in the industry where, uh, I mean, if you're getting an audit uh, uh, from y'all, you're doing it the right way kind of a thing. That, I, I would say, at least in the Bay Area, that's like kind of the buzz that I've heard about your firm. Yeah, and I'm not sure if I, I think I like it. I, <laughs> you know, that's what I want, but I've also been told by prospects, you know, um, we've been told that if we want to pass our audit, we need to go to this other firm over here. And yeah. uh, and it's tough, you know, um, one of our employees was at a Christmas party two years ago and uh, met one of the leaders of one of our competitors. And they said, yeah, you guys are known for um, non-compliant reports and <laughs> we're just not in that space. You know, we, we're trying to get renewing business. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I, I shudder at that kind of stuff because if, if we are going to be 
um, you know, security assessors, if we're going to have integrity and if we're going to um, help people grow, we, we do have to be honest and transparent in the testing results. Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell this one story about a, a company that fired us last year and went back to their old firm, uh, PCI 8.1.3 immediately revoke access for any terminated users. They yeah. had terminated users in there that were six months old. Yeah. And what? We, and we said <laughs> non-compliant. No, really? They, what a surprise. They, I'm shocked. They, this is my shock no, face. Josh, <laughs> they said six months. They said define immediately. And I said, well, it's not six months. And they said, no, it's that we found out about it. You told, you found it. You told us we removed them. That's immediate. And I was <laughs> like, no, no one would ever agree that six months is immediate. And, um, so, you know, we stuck our guns on that one. Um, but we lost a client and, yeah. uh, it, it's tough when that stuff happens. Joseph, 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 you didn't lose a client. Let's be clear. You lost a problem. <laughs> Good point. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> okay. You didn't lose a client. You simult and I'm serious. This is actually a, a really good business piece for pen test firms, compliance firms, IT firms, MSPs, MSSPs. When someone says against all common sense, if they want to be clever, that's one thing. I can appreciate clever. I can appreciate cute. I can appreciate, hey, what about this? I can appreciate discussion and and even disagreement. We can absolutely have a disagreement and still talk. But what they're like, no. You're wrong. This is the way it is. And you're going to do it this way, blah, blah, blah. You didn't lose a client. You lost a problem and you gain reputation in the long run. Bravo, sir. You do. But what Kat and, and Joseph are highlighting, I, I, I've certainly seen it in the PCI world too. And, and there, there is this uh, tension that exists between, uh, you know, calling things out and potentially pissing off your customer and losing your customer and all the different drivers there are to retain the customer, keep the customer happy. There's certainly, I've certainly heard it more than once. Well, you know, we can always go, you know, find another QSA that'll, that'll, that'll say what we want. But uh, I will say this, uh, you know, I won't tell the stories, but probably the highest praise in, in my opinion that I, that I got uh, as the result of a PCI assessment was when I got an email at the conclusion where where my point of contact uh, uh, said effectively, you know, wow, that was the hardest thing we've ever gone through. Thank you. Yeah. And, and they're prepped people, for that. Sorry, God. Yeah, I was going to say, when people see difficult things as worthwhile things, it, it's such a healthy attitude. And, um, that's how I feel about the profession that I've chosen. You know, I, I want to make a difference. I want uh, to see us get stronger. And I think one way that we reach these greater levels of assurance is through stronger testing. And mm -hmm. um, I think that we have to say, yeah, anything worth doing is worth doing right. And it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. We don't need to run towards easier. We need to run towards, let's do this smarter. Let's do this um, challenging thing in the right way. But at the end of the day, we have to accept that it is challenging, um, and treat it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Joseph, what are, what are some other ideas you have or Kat or, or Josh or Scott on sort of, you know, uh, steering the ship in a different direction where there's so much of a mentality. I can't speak completely outside the the PCI world, but certainly within the PCI world, so much emphasis on scope reduction, so much emphasis on, you know, don't look over there because that's not part of anything. Uh, how, how, you know, what are some other ways, any that we haven't touched on that we can try to, you know, educate, train, retrain our customers uh, or, or the companies we work for to, to take a more serious look at security and, and not treat it simply as a, a, a burden or something right. that we is meant <laughs> to be avoided. <laughs> yeah. Make, yeah. make scope reduction great again. <laughs> Shut up, yeah. Scott. Hold on. I got more, I got more here. I got more here. 
I, I, I got more here. I got more here. Make scope reduction great again. No, um, throw scope reduction out the window completely. It should be the entire business that's under the scope, right? We've seen breaches that have spanned from an intern screwing up that sea levels haven't seen to configurations that have been bad to code that has properly been executed. Stop with scope reduction. The entire that's business hard, needs and that's to be expensive. under. I, 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 it doesn't I, matter. I it does not matter. We got to stop these breaches, and the only way to do it is with a holistic view of doing the basics. Cat. <laughs> I think that what Jeff is saying is like, how do you start convincing hearts and minds? I think it's convinced, you know, convincing hearts and minds to kind of start caring about this kind of stuff. How do you get people to care? I try to, I try to speak their language first, which is usually sales. Well, you will get more sales if you X Y Z. And then I might hit him with a little bit of like, uh, uh, you know, what is your worst case? What is the worst case headline that you could see about yourself uh, or about your company or whatever? Um, security, wants to be you know, on the front page wise. of the Wall Street Journal. And they, start, and they start thinking about it and they're over there fudding themselves. And I'm like that these things, you know, it, it's real. You know, you can't you can start a you, you know, you could suffer a breach. You could do xyz so it's not just sales so i try to like take it from sales their language and start pivoting into mine a little bit and that seems to get them to care and want to do the hard things if that makes sense oh yeah oh hell yeah cat that is that is mwah. speak their language which yeah. i bet joseph was part of the reason you became a cpa was that you could speak the language of finance so you could speak the language of business so you could show them in words that they understand in dollars and cents in customers in, in, in all the measurements in all the metrics, <laughs> look metrics. That's another way we're all the same that business people and CEOs and steering committees and boards understand that this is a risk. This is a problem. Here is a solution. Let's see what we can do. It's amazing when we put things in languages that people can understand and they will make it work. Joseph. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. I, I love uh, translating these issues for the board and, you know, getting it into that risk management um, language is, is where it's at for sure. I, you know, one thing I want to say before we run out of time is I really want to see the industry do better with reading and interpreting reports. Um, I, I think that too often, if we are reading the reports, we aren't looking for the right things. And so, for example, what was in scope? You know, do you as the reader understand what was in scope? Uh, for example, when you read the AWS audit report, is the service that you're using part of the scope? You know, they do a very good job in their report laying out what was in scope. And there are some AWS services Late, that are not in there. <laughs> it has gotten better. <laughs> and, um, and so that, that's something that you have to read and understand. I have so many clients that read a report and say, oh, yeah, our third party is compliant. And you look at, it's like, oh, but it was service A. You're using Joseph, service Joseph, B. Joseph, be honest. They flip to, this, they flip to the <laughs> page where it says, is the box checked compliant? I know. But, <laughs> Come on. But cynic, we, need, cynic, we need to do cynic, better. I tell you. We need to do well, better with that. But you're you're bringing up what's what's becoming more and more my reality for most of my clients uh, lately. I'll say where uh, it, it's it's coming to a head. The problem of historically just looking for the compliance checkbox and not reading the thing and and actually finding what's covered and what's not covered. Um, it is becoming more and more common these days for. For companies to not host their own web servers anymore, and and it, we've gone from hosting uh, facilities, web hosting facilities, to the cloud. So what I'm seeing very common these days is you've got a merchant. I'm not going to hold my fingers up because I got a background on. You. First, you've got the merchant, and they're on the hook for PCI, and they've got an e-commerce site. They they sell their stuff online, um, but they have a, a another company that they've engaged, a third party that writes the 
uh, writes and maintains their e-commerce application. And, and it's hosted by yet another company that O happens to be using AWS. And what usually is the trump card in these scenarios is they're using a PCI compliant client payment processor that provides the checkout function. So when you go to check out a page or a pop-up shows up where, and that's where the customer, uh, the consumer types in their credit card information. So you've, you, you, it's very common now that there might be three or four or five third-party service providers that are involved in a merchant's e-commerce application Everybody's PCI compliant, but who's 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 figuring out who should be doing what? Because all the PCI data security requirements apply to this e-commerce site. It's just a question of who's doing what, and trying to unravel that knot has been uh, almost a daily challenge for me for like a half dozen clients for well over the last year. It's Any thoughts difficult. on that, Joseph? Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, you know, there a few years back, I guess it was out of the um, uh, Dodd Frank regulation. You know, there were all these new CFPB requirements, mm. and uh, there were just all these job ads for compliance professionals. And so we plucked out all these people out of all these industries to be in compliance. And are they prepared to unravel that stuff when they're the ones that are reading the reports and deciding? hey, what can impact our organization? It does take a special level of understanding and the ability to investigate and untangle, you know, to figure out, okay, what is a risk to us here? Um, but that's what we've got to get better at. You know, I, I, there are little hints. I mean, some of the issues that we've talked about today, if I'm looking at our company that we use for this service and they had one auditor one year and they had another auditor the next year, do we ask why? Do we investigate what's different and why did they change? And are they opinion shopping? You know, are they moving around because they, they're looking for a different opinion? Um, these are some questions that we need to ask in order to you know, understand what's going on with our third parties. Kat, any, any thoughts on that? Because I know you play more directly in our world here, the PCI world. Um, you know, actually, like I'm more an XQSA or whatever from a while a while ago. Re recovering. Um, well, it's closer than Josh or Scott's. So that's why I put you on. The <laughs> yeah. No, I don't really. I don't really have too much to add. I pretty much agree. So. Right. Yeah, I, I think it's challenging. Um, uh, I will say that change is coming. Uh, the PCI Council is in its last review stage. Uh, for PCI 4.0, and I think they're they're uh, promising now that it's going to be released Q1, late Q1, early Q2 of next year. So it's just around the corner. It's only taken them, I think, well, COVID threw things for a loop, so I shouldn't berate them for being uh, uh, slow, slow to going to press with version four. But they're doing a pretty major overhaul of the data security standard in, in some ways, and yet in other ways, it's still going to, you know, if you do a casual look at it, it's still going to look and feel a lot like it always has. Um, any other uh, uh, parting thoughts, final messages, words of wisdom? You, you Oh, actually, I wanted to ask you, Joseph, you know, since you speak a, since you speak a foreign language, can you can you teach us all a couple key phrases so that we can, you know, go uh, vacation in in client land and 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 get by? You know the 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 sentence I've been saying a lot lately um, that has not been understood in a lot of a lot of lands that I've been visiting lately is that. Um, um, Windows 2008 is not uh, a reasonable operating system for your production environment to run on any longer. And I know I'm speaking a foreign language because I get these looks like, what? That wasn't, that wasn't a finding uh, the last time. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, right now, unsupported software is a scourge in the audits that we're doing. It's just, uh, it's, it's crazy. And, and COVID is getting a lot of blame for that. 
We're hearing mm-hmm. a lot about, uh, yeah, we meant to upgrade last year. All this stuff happened and we didn't, we didn't do it in time. And so here we are, but, um, we're, we're fighting the same battle. You know, people are just, are just wondering why is that an issue and why do we care about the, the operating system? It's behind a firewall and all these other things would have to happen in order for an attacker to exploit this. And, um, Anyway, it's things like that, that every organization has to have a security professional that they trust, whether an employed person or a third party, someone that they trust and, and that can watch for these issues and educate the organization on, hey, this, this operating system is about to um, be unsupported. We're not going to be able to get patches for this, and this is going to be a problem. Let's not be shocked when the assessor comes in and, and points this out. We've got to own this issue and we've got to attack it and not sit back and wait, you know, for somebody else to tell us. So um, I just want to see people lean, lean in on those things. Yeah. Um, it, you know, Windows 8 is sort of the server equivalent in, in my point of sale driven world. Uh, you know, I'm seeing customers still on Windows 7, but as uh uh, somebody pointed out on uh, the Discord, you can get extended service contracts, uh, uh, extended support. Can we get it for XP? Um, I only think that might have expired. On XP. Win- Windows 7 is available only for another year or so. I mean, but Microsoft has actually gotten a whole lot better with their extended support because, like, the customer that I just had uh, when I was reviewing windows 7 systems they're actually we're getting patches uh which is a whole lot better than it was a few years ago and in you know back when it was the xp issue um we could keep going on this uh but uh to sum things up i i think the one idea that i think is is a good idea and i hope it it takes hold at some level which unfortunately means it's got to come from government is the notion that uh there should be cybersecurity expertise and representation at the board level for organizations. Um, for the love of God, if you're involved in security at all, and, and if you are a fan of PCI or hate PCI or just believe what you've heard about PCI as a useless compliance checkbox exercise, download the standard and read it. You will be surprised at how boring and mundane and logical and it's just and it's amazing it is we and sh- i hate we you, should, Jeff. we should do this you, and, and you I hate and you, you hate jeff me? <laughs> you know why do you know why i hate you jeff why do you hate me josh because over the years of doing this podcast and talking to you and talking about pci i've come to realize that pci is actually a lot better than i ever thought it was especially the newer versions and so i absolutely frigging hate you for making me admit that just being clear here <laughs> I have another convert. It's okay. And, and Paul Asadorian uh, knows two PCI requirements. <laughs> he knows what the wow. scanning requirement is, and he knows what the pen testing requirement is. No. Anyway, um, Joseph, thank you for coming on today and, and facil- facilitating this conversation and helping me at least just kind of vent a little bit about uh, how we too often let our customers and let the industry get away with uh, not focusing on what matters, which is the security of data and the security of operations. So thank you for joining us today on Security and Compliance Weekly. I hope we can have you back sometime when we talk about uh, legislation that's been passed that's going to solve the problems and, and we can move on to another topic. That's going to wrap us today for Security and Compliance Weekly. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please feel free to reach out on the Discord server with questions, comments, suggestions for topics or guests are always welcome. Until next week, stay safe, stay secure, keep building those bridges and tearing down silos. We're out.